Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm John. It is Friday, October 15th, 2021, and today I wanted to bring to you a book review. It's a book that I finished a few weeks ago by a writer I'd never read before, someone who's completely new to me, but someone whose name, of course, I've seen, uh, sort of considered usually a second or maybe even third-rate American writer, um, but someone who I, I was interested in nevertheless simply because their name has a bit of a cachet in Southern American writing. And uh, that person is Thomas Wolfe, and this is the novel that I read, You Can't Go Home Again. Uh, I'm going to begin the review with a bit of some exaggeration, I guess, a, a bit of hyperbole. Uh, the original sin of a lot of late 20th and early 21st century American literature is its nakedly and explicitly autobiographical nature. And this turns out to have its roots uh, ensconced much deeper than I would have thought. It goes back much more than just 30 or 40 years. With this novel, I guess I can officially trace it back to at least Thomas Wolfe, whose own life he happily wrote down with within a series of novels, all the while barely remembering to change his characters' names, it sometimes seems like. Like I said, this is a bit of hyperbole, uh, but not by much. Uh, of course, I, I know that autobiographical fiction is even much older than Thomas Wolfe, but the way in which Wolfe flirts with the line between reality and fiction does sort of have an ostentatious theatricality about it. Wolfe's first novel, this is not his first novel, by the way, but uh, his first novel was the quintessential sort of Bildungsroman novel of education and youth called Look Homeward Angel. And it is about his childhood and adolescence of a character named Eugene Gant in a city called Altamont. And in it, he criticizes Altamont as an isolated place full of parochialism and small-mindedness, alcoholism, loneliness, and racial segregation. It should come as little surprise that Eugene Gant is generally thought to be a thinly-veiled version of Thomas Wolfe himself, and Altamont to be Wolfe's own childhood birthplace of Asheville, North Carolina. You Can't Go Home Again was published in 1940, two years after Wolfe's uh, own death from tuberculosis at the age of 37. It tells the story of George Weber, a disaffected writer who has written a novel of his hometown, which has been very, very poorly received back home for many of the same reasons that the novel in um, Look Homeward Angel was poorly received. He just told what he perceived to be the unvarnished truth, and people didn't like what they read. <laughs> uh, this time, the city isn't Altamont, like it is in Look Homeward Angel, but it's a place called Libya Hill in You Can't Go Home Again. Uh, and when he publishes the novel, he goes back home, and he ends up getting death threats and just general disgust. Uh, that, that he gets in response to the book instead of praise and the warm reception that I thought he was expecting. And this negative response kind of sends him into a bit of an existential crisis, which culminates in George Weber's journey out to sort of find himself. He travels to New York City, where he attends a ball, where he meets Piggy Logan, who is uh, a fictionalized version of Alexander Calder, of all people, and Esther Jack, who is a woman with whom he has an on-again, off-again love affair. He then goes on to, uh, to London, where he meets some expatriates, and then he lands in Berlin on the cusp of Hitler's rise to power. 
and he finally returns home to the United States, realizing that, quote, you can't go home to your family, back home to your childhood, away from all the strife and conflict of the world, back home to the old forms and systems of things which once seemed everlasting, but which are changing all the time. Weber, and consequently Wolf, uh, is desperately sincere. He wants nothing more than to portray, I think, from the way I read the novel, the truth and reality of his surroundings as he really perceives them. But despite the commercial success that his book has, the threats and bitterness that he receives from the residents of Libya Hill give him only disillusionment and the stereotypical angst of the artist. But despite Weber's poignant earnestness, it's perhaps clearer here in this 700-page novel, uh, more than any of his other works, that Wolf simply doesn't know how to craft his writing. And here is my big sort of criticism of the book. There are chapter-long digressions that have little to nothing to do with where the novel is going. And I don't really... The, the cha I mean, sometimes two and three chapters, <laughs> back to back, that really have nothing to do with filling out the roundness or fullness of plot or character development or anything else. They just seem complete diversions. Uh, Wolf's themes, uh, which are the common themes of uh, early 20th, m many of the common themes of early 20th century American writing, America's stifling materialism, uh, uh, our lack of uh, our own uh, inwardness and self-reflection are not just expressed in his characters. They sort of run amok, letting those characters become caricatures to the point where no one is a fully developed human being, but rather just some grotesque Dickensian distillation stand-in of pure greed, goodness, humility, or venality. Uh, in the end, You Can't Go Home Again is a magnificent failure, as the saying goes. Um, its hopes and its ambitions are sky-high, and its honesty really lays itself bare. Uh, Thomas Wolfe is not trying to really put you on or trying to to lie to you as a writer where, where I feel many many writers do try to attempt something at like insincerity when when they write I feel like he's really writing what he knows about however uh, his repeated kind of shopworn digressions about money and greed and materialism and the way they slowly work away at people's spiritual lives, not to mention the rest of society, are not the subtly wrought observations of someone like an F. Scott Fitzgerald or, or even an Anthony Trollope. I'm thinking specifically of uh, uh, the way things are, or the way things the, the the way things were. His big his big society novel about financial corruption, um, the way things are now. Anyway, uh, they are, as I said, painfully honest and sincere, but there comes a point at which the tenth blow to the horse will render it no more dead than the ninth did. And I think if you know what I mean by saying that, you'll probably understand my criticism of the book. Um, this could have been with a fair amount of editorial intervention, um, a great American novel, giving novels like The Great Gatsby a run for their money. Even their major themes are the same. Like I said, the crushing smallness of people, their dishonesty, their overconsumption, their worship at the cult of mammon. But Wolf is unable to cordon off his concerns with subtlety, with any sort of artistic discipline. He reminds me of a garrulous seven-year-old who wants to tell you every single detail of his day and having decided on his two or three favorite, repeats them ad infinitum at the dinner table without his enthusiasm ever waning in the least. 
It's a novel I'm glad I read, but also one that I can't honestly say I would ever recommend to anyone else. There is something to be said for the passionate enthusiasm of the young artist, someone like Thomas Wolfe. But part of becoming a novelist is knowing that you can't say, or show, or write, it all. Every time I think of You Can't Go Home Again, I'll probably think of the writer Wolf might have become had he not died so young. Remember, he was only 37. And had he actually had a chance to take that lesson to heart. If you have read Thomas Wolf, uh, especially his other relatively uh, well-known novel, uh, which I mentioned in the review, Look Homeward Angel, um, let me know. Look Homeward Angel is quite a bit shorter. Um, this one is, is uh, 700 pages long. So um, if you have any opinions on his writing uh, or anything else to, to add to the conversation, please let me know. It's my review of Thomas Wolfe's You Can't Go Home Again. Bye, everyone. See you later.